Take it, Judy's not. Well, good morning, everyone. Yeah, you were wondering where I am. Yeah, I'm simulcast from the Beatty House in Newcastle. No, I, I took the wrong paper upstairs. Yeah. Good morning, everyone. Yeah, you were really weird when you didn't say good morning when I said it from way up in the balcony, but that's why we have microphones. So, anyway, I left my notes upstairs, and I thought I should probably have them. Uh, I'm pretty bad off anyway. So, let's stand and start our worship together. Going to Scripture and the call to worship. We're in Galatians. Just as a bit of an advertisement, Wednesday nights for the next six weeks. I know it's winter, so there's always going to be maybe a, a need for a snow cancellation. I hope not, but the next six Wednesdays that we do meet, we'll go into a chapter of the book of Galatians. This Wednesday, we'll talk of Galatians chapter 1. 
I'm going to speak about just a couple of verses of it later on this morning, but right now, here's a couple more verses from that first chapter. Would someone like to be our leader? Maybe you've not done it a long time, maybe you've never before. Would be our leader for just a few words. Tanner, you got it? Okay, go ahead. Or am I trying to please people? If I was still trying to please people, I would not be a servant of Christ. Lord, let us only see your only approval. And that's the rub, isn't it? We were even talking about that a little bit in one of our Sunday school classes this morning. That If we look to get the approval of men and women, the world, we are going to be Sorely dissatisfied. It's not going to come. The holy approval of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ to God in heaven, the Holy Spirit, that's what it is. Let's pray. Lord, we pray this morning that we come into this house pure in heart, pure in spirit, pure in belief, Excited to start our week serving the King. Lord, let us have that focus now when we pray, when we sing, when we turn the pages of Scripture, and when we just love on one another. Come into the church the way we are, just as I am. Lord, most of all, as we're here, let us know what we believe. And we'll affirm that right now with the recitation of the Lord's Prayer. Let's pray it together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Let's stay standing. We're going to do some hymns today. We're going to start with one that's got 17 verses, or is it five? It's five. It's five, says Cindy. It's, it's Judy here. She said it's five. So we will sing the wondrous story. And if she stops after two verses, then we'll stop. But I think there's five. Let's sing together. I can't count. I'm the one who left his paper upstairs. So.
consult with Anita Joe this morning, and she said there was some improvement yesterday, not a lot, but she said we'll take anything that we can get, but he's not doing good at all. The doctors are not giving him good work at all. So. How old is he? You don't have any idea? How old? 51. 51. Yeah. yeah. And then also, uh, Shane's grandmother, Joyce Burns, passed away this week, and he was the family was a great up for this. He's been suffering with cancer for probably six months, maybe, at that long. So, of course, he they knew it was coming, but he was 73 years old. I think we'd seen that on Facebook as well. We'd seen about Terry Preston, too. Lots of prayers lifted up by Betty for that, Betty Sharp. We have others we need to bring up today, too. So our little red-headed baby with the big eyes is not here. She's not feeling good. She's done the best she can being in church as much as she can. But we do appreciate when we get a text or a, a phone call saying, hey, we're coughing our heads up. We'll be at home today. Okay, good. That's good. I know everybody wants to know where they are and feeling good and feeling like they're making a safe, good choice for everybody else and themselves. So that's why we have that tripod and that phone. Looks like they're on. That's good. That's why we do it. Leachman's on as well. Leachman's on as well. Yeah, they're about ready to be well, aren't they? They've had about enough. Leachman's and Holders cut the swath through your all's clan, Troy. Let's get them all back well. We've had enough. Norman's on too. Good. So that whole big clan mm -hmm. is going through it. Okay. Tanner, I saw you raise your hand. Uh, well, I have to have a positive prayer. Good. Praise. We need some of that.
Lynn Powell. There you go. Okay. Paula? Yeah. Uh, did hear that Elizabeth made it home this week. Also. That's right. Good. Yeah, good news. Elizabeth's home and Travis is home. We did go and visit Travis at uh, Mark and Lisa's Wednesday, and Travis doing great and uh, moving more every day. And Elizabeth, it's going to be harder. She was injured more. You know, believe it or not, even though she was on the passenger side, the vehicle hit her side more. That's how out of control the other vehicle was. And she's she's hurt more, and she has to be a lot more gingerly with her treatment because she's got two infants in her womb right now. Um, she's about six months. So pray for Elizabeth. Pray for Travis. They're in separate households right now. Elizabeth is with her parents, and Travis is with his parents. So, But they are home. And they need our prayers. It's going to be a long road. And those babies need our prayers. Let's get those babies safely here to earth. Any other praises or prayers today? Well, let's go into our time of prayer now. And I'll stop talking and for a while and let us all pray privately and then I'll close this. your name for Judy getting back into church. Thank you for the praises of Jeannie being in church today. And thank you for the opportunities that Tanner is getting right now. Um, when he says himself he shouldn't have had those opportunities last year, new year, different, different Tanner, different outlook. And Lord, we pray right now for Charles Adams to get back here. His little baby's missing. Pray for Cobra May Benham that um, she can feel better. We love seeing that beautiful baby here. Pray for one of our other little babies, Wesley Holder, who's walking right now, that his mommy and daddy get well quick, and, and that um, his aunt and uncle, Samantha and Victor and Victor, his cousin, gets well soon, and, and that their grandpa Norman can keep recuperating, getting better and better. I pray for Daryl and Pam that are out this week again, just uh, been so much illness going through. We pray today for the family of Joyce Burns, family of David Lewis, family of Rocky Black, family of Janice Goodrich Holder. Pray for Ron and Brenda, as Brenda coughing today. Pray for Terry Preston that the word is not good, but we're hearing a glimmer of encouragement. Build on that. Do not let this illness triumph over another. Rid us of that evil, evil plague and all the political machinations that have come with it. Lord, bless this house of the Lord and let us feel better and closer to you because we're here. In the name of Jesus, we do pray. Amen. 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 To our announcements, now we go. Our celebrations. I'm looking at the week ahead from the 16th to the 22nd. I see no birthdays. Is there a birthday in the house that I've somehow missed? Me. From today till Saturday. We have an anniversary next Sunday, a big one, but is there an anniversary in this house? this week? None? Okay. We'll go into the announcements then. One I want to bring up quickly and now is that I know uh, Kathy went to the Emmaus gathering Friday night and you said that they have a few new people signed up. Now the last Emmaus walk in October was canceled for lack of people signing up. And I know it's been a weird time. But I've also told you that the Emmaus walks that happen in March, just two scant months away, could be the final ones in the Louisville area as we know them. Because the way the United Methodist Church is getting ready to split into three different denominations, that could take the upper room with it, which runs the walk to Emmaus. I actually handed several of you today 
a, an application to the Emmaus Walk. Some of you filled them out before. Two years ago, when we were having them, I have more at the pulpit here. Would love to have anybody and everybody sign up for that. If you don't have one, get one from me. It's a life-changing experience. I wouldn't be standing here doing what I'm doing without the walk to Emmaus. It's for adults. You don't have to be old as an adult. You don't have to be young as an adult. Just an adult. And it's from a Thursday night to a Sunday afternoon. The church pays for it. And people around you will love on you and take care of your animals or whatever while you're gone. So see me or Harriet or anybody else in this church that's part of the Emmaus community to get on that. And the quicker we send applications, the better chance that they'll know they can have it. If they see that the applications are not happening, they'll cancel it again. And then when the denomination of the United Methodist Church splits, it may not happen anymore. So there's that, Emmaus. Be part of it. I know that uh, board nominations have continued to come in. Casey received a couple already this morning. We have three Sundays counting today, the 16th, the 23rd, and the 30th, and that's it. Talk to somebody that you think, boy, I love her leadership or his leadership. I think they would be a great voice on the board. Talk to them, ask them, are you interested? And then if they are and they accept that, give that name to Casey Banta. And if you have them in mind for a position, like, wow, she'd be really good at the secretary. He'd be really good at the trustee, whatever. Talk to them about that. Get that to Casey as well. Remember, board chair, board vice chair, treasurer, secretary, and trustee are the positions. We have trustee, of course, meaning taking care of the, the maintenance, the repair, the phone calls to pick up more gas for the tank, all that kind of stuff. And we'll have our congregational meeting, therefore, the second week of February. There's no meetings between now and then. I know sometimes I get uh, typos in here, whether it says or not. But what I see in here, February 13th at noon, a meeting. And that is for all of us just to stay out for worship. We'll have a board meeting with the new board members sometime in early March. So that's how that works. I already said this uh, coming Wednesday we have the book of Galatians chapter 1. It is very short. Read the book of Galatians. Take notes on it. Um, look at multiple Bible translations. A lot of you like the King James. Look in there. If you have a modern translation that you like as well, bring them both. Take notes. Bring them on Wednesday night so that we can see what each translation says. And maybe if there's study notes in a particular Bible you love or on a website that you like to go through or an app, write them down. We want to go over Galatians chapter 1 with a fine tooth comb and see what God would have us hear and say. It'll be a good time. And there was a conversation Wednesday night in the, the fellowship hall about how the 15 or so of us that were there were like, you know what, if people only knew how much of a good time we had, we do. Try it out. I know it's a change and it's different to come out on Wednesday night. And I know everybody guards their schedule. I do too. But I love Wednesday night. And there's a lot of us that might even secretly say, it's better than Sundays. <laughs> I don't know where I heard that. Yes, I do know where I've heard it. I've heard it from some of you. Come Wednesday night. All right. Next Sunday we have choir practice. We have a song that we are going to hopefully sing in a couple of weeks here. So if you missed it last week, I know some people were out. Come next Sunday at 10 o'clock. We have a song that we are practicing, and we'll get right to it, and I hope that we'll be singing it to the congregation uh, two weeks from today. That same week, uh, in a week and a half, Rachel, our first volleyball game. It's 10, no, nine days from now, isn't it? I think, yes, I did. I put it into the bulletin. We play Lockport Baptist the first night. So 7.30 on Tuesday the 25th. We have a good time at Crawford Baptist Church doing that, so... Come to that and see Rachel if you're interested in more information. <coughs> and then uh, lastly, as far as things coming up, a men's breakfast two weeks from yesterday at Lawson's in Campbellsburg, 9 a.m. And I've already consulted with one of the men in the church about leading a short devotion, so hopefully that will happen very well. Oh, yeah, I just got a wink and a nod. So uh, come to that. We will eat a whole lot and talk a whole lot. Any 
announcements need to be made by anyone other than me, it would be great. Next food distribution in, in February, are there not names on that particular month there? Okay. I know that it just happened a couple days ago, so that's there. And just as a reminder, if any of you were not here last Sunday, remember about communion that will be happening in just a few minutes? Two choices now. There are still the prepackaged cups in the back, but also our servers will be bringing the plate. So if you want to be part of that, but remember the offering is going to stay back there. It'll uh, just stay on the table to make it more private, more personal. All right, we're going to go now into our next song. I had a request for a, a Mercy Me song before worship this morning here with me, and so I thought we're just going to have Mercy Me. Now, the, the song we're going to sing is from the hymnal, 104. We sing it about once a year, Come Thou Fount of Every Blessing, and then after that for the fellowship time, well, just look in your bulletin. It's going to be good. So let's stand and sing uh, Come Thou Fount of Every Blessing. Death shall lose me. I cannot grow. 
Right, so we go into fellowship time, visit as you like, and visit as you're invited. And just a note, the song during the fellowship is a recording, not a live performance. It is a recording, okay? So enjoy that as you visit. Be sure to look over your shoulder at the screen. All right, let's visit, visit. Move around. I'm sure Casey and JR would love for you to move around. How you doing? Move around. Paula, what's our count today? 
Take of Holy Communion this morning. Every single Sunday. This is the moment where you really confirm your belief. Say, this is who I am. This is what I believe. And it's not about me. It's about our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. There's nothing you or I can do to merit or earn our salvation. So if you're trying to behave your way into heaven? Nope. We do this in remembrance of him because of the sacrifice made on the cross and in the grave. And then come out of that grave. So remember the servers will bring around the plate with the uh, bread and the juice and if you'd rather not participate that way just keep your hand up. Hey, pass it on. That's all right. Right now in preparation, we'll sing, Blessed Be the Tie That Binds. Let's sing together. Blessed be the tie that binds our hearts in Christian love. The fellowship of giving minds is mine today. Before I 
stand together for the doxology. studying all the different letters he wrote, Romans and Ephesians and the two letters to the Corinthians, the two letters to Thessalonians and all that. It's nice to look at the dates of when he wrote those books. We don't know for sure about any of them with all certainty. There are two theories about when the book of Galatians was written and they come from things that happened <laughs> in the book of Acts as well as what he said in Galatians. And one of the schools of thought that's especially been prevalent in the last 100, 150 years is that could be that he wrote this letter in about A.D. 47, not too many years after he became a Christian, and it probably was the first letter he sent. Written even before Mark's Gospel, which is generally been accepted as the first thing written in the New Testament. Now, we don't know for sure. There's another school of thought. It could have been written 10 years later. It's fine. It doesn't really matter. But what I love about it is that if this is the first recorded word of the New Testament, boy, it sure feels like it. Because when I read of the first chapter, and I hope all of you do this week, it's an invitation for me not only to come Wednesday night, but just to get into the Bible. The first chapter in my Bible that I was reading from the other day was about this much of a page. 
a small print, of course, but it's not a whole lot. And it was so chock full a wealth of knowledge and information. There's confirmation of what was in the book of Acts chapter 9 that I taught about from the last two weeks about what he was doing, where he was, who he was with. But what made me think, you know, it, it could be the first thing he wrote was that he was so incredibly full of wonder and surprise and newness in what he said in this first chapter of Galatians. The question I have to you to start out right now is, have you ever had that feeling of wonder or newness or amazement about God? Maybe when you were first converted to be a Christian. Could have been when you were a youth. Some of you came down that aisle. Jeannie was telling us on the way here this morning that when she was a youth, a teenager, she was baptized right here in this chapel. That's many moons ago, 30 plus years ago. And I know for most of us, when that happens, that first time that you join the church or are baptized or the light bulb goes off, you live in this glow, this wonder of the grandeur of our King. In Sunday school this morning, one of our young ladies of the church said, when someone in my family who doesn't attend church heard about somebody in need, said, well, I'm going to pray for them. She said, I felt a warmth. A glow inside of me thinking she's going to pray. She doesn't talk about prayer a whole lot. She's going to pray. What I hear in this first chapter of Galatians is that from Saul, later called Paul. He was a bad dude. But here he's broken. He's transformed into something new. And what I chose as just a two-verse snippet to speak about today so I don't cover the whole thing so that you have plenty to look up for Wednesday night is verses 11 and 12, and here they are. This kind of sums up what he's saying for the chapter and reconfirms what he says in the first verse. He says, I want you to know, brothers and sisters, that the gospel I preached is not of human origin. I did not receive it from any man, nor was I taught it. Rather, I received it by revelation from Jesus Christ. Now, he started the book of Galatians, the first chapter, talking about this otherworldly essence of what was happening. Think about who Saul was. Trained as a Pharisee, he was <laughs> taught a lot of rules and regulations and rituals that were of, on the fourth line, human origin. And we added a lot back in the Jewish day to pile on top of what God wanted to teach. Do we do that as Christians now? Yes. We obscure the holy gospel of Jesus Christ with our own stuff. He says right here, I did not receive it from any man. Well, he has been taught diligently by men. Probably from a very young age. They probably earmarked him, age of Brantley, maybe even age of Cambry, as, oh, this guy, Saul. He's good. We're going to groom him. And some of it, I'm sure, was well-intentioned. You know, the Pharisees, they get a pretty hardcore story in the Bible, but you know, that came about during that quiet period between Malachi and the Gospels when the Jewish state and the Jewish people were in a terrible disarray. And what the Pharisees wanted to do when they came onto the scene was bring it back to the simple ways of the book. And what happened, like many of us, they thought they were doing great with their new look at church and they piled so much stuff on top of it of what they wanted and what they thought they needed that it turned into a mess. And so when Jesus Christ arrived on the scene, born of a virgin in Bethlehem and raised up, came and spoke at the synagogue at the age of, you know, early age of accountability, 12 or 13, and then coming into his adulthood, they didn't even recognize him. And when they did recognize him, they wanted him dead. Good folks who got so far off track. 
We might even think that in a church in America. We might think, boy, we've got it right in our church. And if Jesus walked in the door at 1130, right in the middle of the song, we'd tell him to sit down till the song's over. Don't you come in here. We're, this is what we do. You can't interrupt the flow. And by the way, your sandals are dirty. Did you think about using a comb this morning, Jesus? Saul saying, I didn't get it from those guys. This gospel, I did not receive it from man, nor was I taught it. You know, he was taught plenty. He learned so much. He got so many gold stars in Sunday school, he needed a new poster on. He was it. But all that was for naught. Because this gospel he received was rather by revelation from Jesus Christ. Now I know a lot of you in this room have done a very good thing and taught people in Sunday school maybe with little guys and gals like this morning teaching the kids. You might have taught teenagers, young adults, full adults. But whatever we teach cannot hold a candle, nor should it ever in our hearts hold a candle to the revelation of the gospel by Jesus Christ. And that is about a personal relationship between you and him. In our faith, we do not prescribe that we need an intermediary, meaning we don't need to pray to a priest to talk to Jesus. We don't need to pray to Jesus' mom to talk to Jesus. We don't have to be in this place, this wonderful place that I love so much, to talk to Jesus. We don't have to have a fish on our bumper or a cross on our neck to talk to Jesus. Because the revelation of the gospel is just between you and him. Saul was transformed in spite of his fantastic church achievements. Now, I'm not standing here to disparage or take away from every good thing that's been done in this church and other churches. I'm not. I am absolutely in love with this church. But I want our eyes and our hearts to be open to above. There's nothing I can say or do or any wise woman or man in this church can do that can be even a speck of what he has for us. Read Galatians this week and see if you can feel some of that same wonder where you think, you know, this is not between me and teachers. This is not between me and the class. This is not what I learned as a youth. This is, in fact, out of this world. And I don't mean out of this world like, man, that pizza is out of this world. No. I love pizza. Some of it tastes like it's out of this world. But what I'm saying is, this world can't contain what Jesus has done. And therefore, should our faith and our religion, our spiritual life, be contained in this world? No. Another thing we're talking about this morning in the Sunday school class that we happen to be in is that we can set our expectations or what we think should happen here of this earth. We can base our satisfaction, our happiness on what happens here. We are going to be let down. I hate to burst your bubble, even if it's a really beautiful pink bubble with a rainbow and a unicorn and a kitten on it. I'm going to burst it because we're not promised that. Not going to have it. Now you might think even it would another, this is a bone of contention with a lot of us is that, you know, 
There are people outside the church prissing and prancing around that are not in church. They're not following the Bible. They're not believing in anything. And they seem to be having just a wonderful old time while they're here as the earth revolves around the sun. That ain't right. Is that what the Bible says? If we think it does, then we're doing what Paul mentions earlier than these verses. Read verses about 3 through 10. And what you'll find there is he's saying, the gospel's written by men, false teaching, full of wind, full of promises. No. It's not what it's about. Dig into it deeply. I'm not standing here just as an advertisement for Wednesday. I want everybody to read the Bible, even if you're like, you know what, I'm not coming Wednesday. I'm not. Nice try. I'm not. Get into the Bible anyway and recapture some of that. The picture I put on the front. He's recording these words. In this case, Saul, Paul. Recording these words, and they're coming straight from above. I believe that, and I hope you do too, that the word of God is the word of God. It's not the word of Paul. He's the instrument. He's probably wondering who wrote this because if left to my own devices, I got nothing. I feel that a lot of times standing right here in our beloved little chapel thinking, you know what? I'm not worthy of being up here. I'm just a human guy that doesn't have a whole lot of sense and doesn't have a whole lot of heart. But praise God that Jesus fills my mouth sometimes. Sometimes he might need to fill it a little less or fill it with something different. But praise God that he has hold of us. Now part of that wonder, part of that otherworldliness is about <coughs> proclaiming it. You know, for me today, there's not much that could be more beautiful or more important than one of our loved ones' family, blood kin, who has had to put up with church coming through this phone that can actually be here today, like Jamie. That, that trumps everything. Because if you think about it says in the Bible that we look through a glass darkly and then we see clearly the step from watching online to being here in person. That's like to me the step from sitting in the pew and not knowing what's going on to saying, I surrender all. Lord, what do you have for me? Put me to work. I don't want to keep my eyes on the prizes of this earth. I want to keep my eyes on what the Lord will have for me. It might mean a big change in my life. It might mean that what I think is good and true is not any longer good and true. It might mean that my schedule gets disrupted a little bit because instead of focusing on myself, I might have to focus on someone else or focus on the Lord. It might mean that my running buddies change a little bit because I want to run with folks that got that book and that book doesn't have a layer of dust on it. It's been opened so much it's got kind of greasy looking, it got duct tape on it, it's got a little dirt on it, and some of the pages might be missing because they've been using it. I want to be changed. So when I stand here and we have the last hymn, say, oh, how I love Jesus. Don't say it like the world says it. Oh, I love Jesus. I can't wait to get to heaven someday. In the meantime, I'm going to do what I want. But oh, I love Jesus. Heck yeah, I do. When we sing that today, sing it like you mean it and do mean it. And it's a hymn of invitation. If you need to make a change in your life, be baptized. If you need to make a change in your life and join the church and say, you know what, I know I've already been part of this church a while, but here I am, then do it. Or if you need to say, hey, just pray for me because I'm a hot mess in case you didn't know. I am. You probably knew already, but here I am proclaiming it. Let's do it. Let's stand and sing the whole thing. This one does not have five verses. Said he don't care. She said, you didn't play eight verses. We're not a mega church. We're not going to do 17 verses. Do this one a cappella. Just the men. Just the women. No. Just sing what's up on the screen. And if you want, come on down at the end of the song.
Oh, goodness, I have, oh, it's praise him, praise him. Excuse me, I have two songs listed. Praise him, praise him. How about that? Let's do that. We'll praise his name. But in the meantime, uh, the thought about, oh, how I love Jesus, sometimes we just sing like we're just saying that and it means nothing. We sang that one last week. But let's praise him like we mean it. Thank you, Harriet, for catching that. Thank you. Praise him, praise him, Jesus, our blessed Redeemer. Sing all earth, his wonderful love proclaim. Hail him, hail him, the highest archangels in glory. Strength and honor, give to his holy name. Like a shepherd, Jesus will guard his children. In his arms he carries them all day long. Praise him, praise him, tell of his excellent greatness. Praise him. Praise Him, praise Him, Jesus our blessed Redeemer. For our sins He suffered and bled and died. He our rock, our hope of eternal salvation. Hail Him, hail Him, prophet and priest and king. Sound His praises, Jesus who bore our sorrows. Okay, 
Now I see. Took it all down. Now I see. Well, we're going to sing a praise called a prayer right now. We're going to pray as a benediction. And then I'm going to ask these ladies to join me back there so you all can greet them on the way out. Okay? Let's pray together. Lord, we thank you for today. As wonderful as it was to have someone jump out of the online church service into the chapel like Jeannie did this morning. Thank you for even more blessings of having Jean and Wanda say, you know what? We want y'all to know we're family. Thank you for your blessings. Praise him, praise him. Ever a joyful song. Send us out. Let us teach others to come and see the wonders, the otherworldliness of what Jesus Christ has to offer us for eternity. Not just here, but forevermore. In his name we do pray. Amen. 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 As we walk down that way, if you go out the back, be sure to say hey to Miss Jean and Miss Wanda. They, they move in fast.